Good morning, Lovins. So the good news is that um, we have two members in Florida and both of them have checked in and they are fine. Uh, apparently the hurricane turned a little bit and so they're good. Um, and uh, so that's a good thing. And then there was something else and I don't remember what the other thing was. So what I remember, I'll let you know. Um, but that it was good news. So, you know, I just wanted you to know uh, Adelia has made landfall in so we actually had an almost cool morning. Like I went out and, uh, and, I, it, and immediately as, uh, as I walked around the corner, I was like, don't say it, don't say it, bite your tongue. Don't, don't even say it. Um, cause it was, it was nice. <laughs> it was like, but the first day of September, which is, uh, that's probably what it was. Cause we're, we're closing in on the end of October, uh, August. The first day of September, the temperature is going to be 102. Yeah. We need the heat to break. All right. It is August 30th. Our title is I Have No Fear. Our author is Dana Gatlin from God is the Answer from 1938. And she is from Unity. So, I have no fear. Do not be afraid to ally yourself with God. Hand over to spirit every thought, every fact, and condition that causes you dread and worry. That too, that is too much for you to handle. Do not hesitate. Hand them over. Know that God is regulating these worrisome matters and conditions for you now. Know this as a blessed truth. Thrill to it. God is helping you now. God itself. Almighty God, with its power and love and wisdom, who and or what in the world can stand against God? God is here. Spirit is now doing its mighty work. God itself, omnipotent, infallible, omnipresent. What can there possibly be for you to fear? Charge your mind with this glorious, freeing, electrifying thought charge and fill your whole being with it. It is true. It is true for you in proportion as you fill yourself with it and know it and feel it through every atom of your being in proportion as you know and feel it to the exclusion of everything else. Of every dull, dire, negative factor opposed to God, God's will for you is good. Everything that is harmonious and right, it can and will bring good forth if you give spirit a chance. But even spirit cannot bring it forth if you do not make room for it. If you clutter your mind, which should be receptive to God and God's truth only with doubts and ugliness and fears, say to yourself, Today, I give God a chance by putting myself and my affairs wholly and unreservedly in Spirit's hands. All right, Dana. It could be Dana, but I have a friend named Dana. It's spelled the same way, so Dana it is. Okay. Um, so, in practitioner training... And in ministerial training, um, and pretty much any science of mind class, whatever the problem is, whatever the problem is, the first place you go is God. The first place you go is God. You go to treatment, you go to meditation, you it doesn't matter, you go to affirmations, but the first place you go is God. Once you have gone to God, then you go and handle it, okay? Because once you have gone to God, then, then you have opened yourself up to the guidance. And that is what she is saying today. It doesn't matter what the problem is. It doesn't matter how big or small the problem is. It doesn't matter. The point is you always go to God first. Okay. That's, and that is the truth that she is saying. And that is the truth that science of mind teaches. And that is the truth that new thought teaches. Um, because she's unity, divine science, Christian science. It doesn't matter. All of the new thought 
umbrellas of which science of mind falls under, they all say no matter what the problem is, big or small, it does not matter. You go to God first. Okay. And her point is, is it's two things. Nothing can stand in the way of God. And it's only going to work for you to the proportion that you fill yourself with it. Okay. And that's why we say, why do we go to God last? Why do we save God as the, I've tried everything else and now I'm going to go to God? Like, that's really the opposite way we should do it, no matter what the problem is. Because God doesn't know time or space. God doesn't know big or small. God doesn't know little problems versus big problems. So whatever it is, you go to God. Okay? There is no problem too small for God, just as there is no problem too big for God. And that's one of those things. Well, I hate to bother you. You're not bothering God. You're not bothering God. <laughs> what you are doing is you are setting yourself into alignment with God so that God can, because you have now set yourself into alignment, that, and as she said, in proportion to um, your willingness to accept it, you have now opened yourself up to the guidance. So we say God can only do through for you what God can do through you, okay? So you go to God first with the problem, you set yourself into alignment, you signal your willingness to pay attention to the guidance that you are going to receive, and then you get up and you go handle it. But you're not handling it by yourself because you have gone to God first. Now, even if you don't go to God first, you're still not handling it by yourself. You're just, you have not, you have not aligned yourself and signaled yourself to the openness and willingness to be guided. In proportion to which, and that's the point of going to God first. When you go to God first, then you are not, what did, what did she say? You are not cluttering your mind with doubts and fears. Go to God first. I can't be any more clearer. She can't be any more clearer. No matter the issue, no matter how big or small, you go to God first. And I'll tell you it's the other way too. Um, the interesting thing about when with practitioner students, because I'm not, because I have, one, I, I'm, I've now taught practitioner students, but I remember being a practitioner student, and I remember, you know, just having practitioner students, because they're required every class to go to a different practitioner. Now, the idea behind that is not because they have problems, but so that they can see how different practitioners do it. So that they get an idea, okay, there's a lot of different ways to do this. And they All they have to do is figure out and settle into their style. So, but I'll ha I've had a couple of practitioner students come to me and go, but I, I don't have a problem. You don't have to come to a practitioner with a problem, okay? Just like you don't have to come to God with a problem. If things are going well and you are happy, then you can go to God with gratitude. And it comes back to a proportion. And it's actually important to go to God when things are going well. Because then you don't wait and save God as that last ditch effort. You know, if you get into the habit of regularly going to God when things are going well, you kind of create that bank, but you're also creating that habit. So you don't clutter your mind with fears and doubts. And when things aren't going exactly the way you want, you know where to go. You have a well-worn path. You have a regularly practiced habit. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I talk about every day. Creating that well-worn path. Okay? So, Dana Gatling... Gatlin, Gatlin, there's not a G on the end of it. It is true for you in proportion as you fill yourself with it and know it and feel it through every atom of your being. In proportion as you know and feel it to the exclusion of everything 
else. God's will for you is good. Everything that is harmonious and right. Spirit can and will bring good forth if you give spirit a chance. But even spirit cannot bring it forth if you do not make room for spirit. Okay? Go to God first. That first line is, do not be afraid to ally yourself with God. Hand over to spirit every thought, every fact, every condition that causes you dread and worry. That is too much for you to handle. Do not hesitate. Hand them over. It doesn't mean that you are not going to work on your situation. But what it means is, is that you know that you will be guided. Okay? I have no fear. Why do I have no fear? Because I know I'm not alone in doing this work. I know that I have infinite and inexhaustible power that is my ally. That I can hand this over to and understand that I will be guided. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to take care of my business, but what it means is I'm not going to do it by myself and that I will be guided in taking care of my business. Okay. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to ally ourselves in full with the source of our own being in every situation. The good, the not preferred, the how did I get myself into this situation? Don't save God as for the last ditch effort. Last ditch effort. Go to God first. That's the mission. Go to God first. Whenever you come up against an obstacle, go to God first. And understand that you will then be guided. The people and the places and the resources and the things that you need will come to you in a myriad of infinite ways that you can't even pre predict or anticipate, but they will come because you have gone to the source of your being first and said, I am willing. That's what I say about, um, that's why we have to ask for things. Yes, God knows what you need. And yes, God is ready to bring you what you need. The reason why we have to ask is because we have to signal our willingness to receive it. And that's it. All right. I'm going to get off my soapbox and remind you <laughs> the other mission today, because I've already given you the mission. Ally yourself with God first. Go to God first, whatever the situation is. That's the mission today um, from our from uh, Dana Gatlin. Um, the other mission is the same mission I give you every day, which is the spiritual practice of self-care. To do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself. And it can look like just about anything. Today, it, since the morning is cool enough and we need to get all of the pine straw off of our roof because it's not good for our roof. Um, but I have to go to work today. What I did was I, I asked my partner, I said, all right, when you are done on the roof and back in the house, please text me so that I know that you're not on the roof anymore. And then that way, I don't worry all day. That is the most loving, kind, and compassionate thing I can do for myself. That is, I ask for what I needed. And he looked at me and went, okay. So he may or may not remember, which means if I haven't heard from him for a while, I'll text him. But I ask for what I needed. Okay. I know he'll be fine. So, but. I'm asking for what I need. That is sometimes the most loving, kind, and compassionate thing you can do. Ask for what you need. Uh, it also, like, as I always say, take a deep breath before you speak. Uh, take a walk. Take a nap. Take a break. Uh, say no to something that is just draining you. Say yes to something that pushes you a little out of your comfort zone. And don't save the good stuff. Eat dessert first. Eat dessert first. You know, you know what I believe that chocolate is the first step to fixing anything. <laughs> okay, so we can go to God and then we can have a piece of chocolate and then we're ready to handle anything. 
I did. That's that's my I'm gonna go treat. Have a piece of chocolate, and then I got this. I can do anything. I can handle it. I got it. Um, because I know I'm gonna be guided, and I know I'm not doing it by myself. Uh, but when I say your life is, when I say you deserve first, your life is a special occasion. None of us know how long we've got. So don't save the good stuff. Don't save the good stuff. Treat your life as the special occasion that it is. Uh, burn the nice candles, wear the nice clothes, use the fancy dishware and glassware and silverware. Uh, don't save it for just that one time. You know, that once a year. Get it out and use it a little more often. Your life, it can be extraordinary. You just have to recognize it. So, um, and remember that no is a complete sentence. And yes can set you off on adventures. So, so practice love, kindness, and compassion on yourself. You are your own best test subject. Is this the most loving, kind, and compassionate thing? You get immediate feedback. I, and I, I, and I mentioned this, I'm talking about creating habit. You know, if you go to God first, no matter what the situation is, then you don't save God for the last ditch effort when things get really weird. Um, or if, you know, far be it. But if, if things go bad, don't save God for the last ditch effort, you know, create that habit of going to God first and then create that habit of going to God in gratitude too. you know, saying thank you for all of the good things. Um, because the cool thing about that is when you look for the good and praise it, as Emma likes to say, it multiplies. It, it, it just, it works that way. And it is. So, you know, it's like, go to God first. If it's good, go to God. If it's bad, go to God first. Then have a piece of chocolate and then we can handle it. Okay. Um, so, you know, and then I, I, so that is the habit I want you to create. Um, that is the habit that Dan is talking about it because it, it, it is about proportions. You know, it is the more often you go to God, they need the more in alignment you'll say. But I also want to remind you that you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. You are a beloved child of God. That's the main reason why I say it every day. Take care of yourself. Okay. Remind, as they say on the airlines, airlines, put your oxygen mask on first, then help your neighbor. Okay. All right. Um, the rest of the suggestions are the easy ones. Do something to engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like. Um, do please take, um, oh, <laughs> drink plenty of water. It, I think it, they said it, we're back to the hundreds today. So it could be a hundred today, a hundred tomorrow. And then on Friday, which is the first day of uh, September, 102. Hydrate. Your body works better when it's well hydrated. Your brain works better when it's well hydrated. Your skin looks better when it's well hydrated. Drink plenty of water. Uh, and then get that early in your day bright light. Um, we're in that seasonal part of the year where the, 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 the sunrise and sunset is shifting. And it's a little easier for me to get up and catch the sunrise. I do like sunrises. Do I prefer sunrises to sunsets? I don't know. I like them both. It's the two times a day where God creates fantastic art that only lasts for a little bit. So I don't know. What, I don't think I have a preference. I think I like them both. But that light from seven to nine in the morning is at a particular angle where you, it supports your vitamin D. It supports your circadian rhythms. It's all science. You can look it up when you get that five to 10 minutes. Um, you'll have more energy during the day. You'll sleep better at night. It's science, please. You know, and if you don't get up, you know, that early or you get up before the sun, artificial light will help too. five to 10 minutes of bright light, blue light. That's what we're talking about. Um, please. It's something easy and inexpensive that you can do for yourself. So, all right. Uh, and then the last one, I've already halfway mentioned it. Open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. Okay. Heaven is a mindset. It is a, it's a state of consciousness. It, it's a choice. Um, Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. That means that heaven is a state of mind. We want to create a world that works for everybody. We do our own work. 
that is the gift that we give to others when we when we do our own work. And so we create that heavenly mindset. We move through the world differently. We become that island of peace, that island of calm. So that when it, because we are willing to go to God first, we you know even when we're not having the best day, you know we know it's going to be okay. We know it's going to be okay. So we can be more calm and peaceful about it. So when we meet people who need a little extra, we've got the peace and calm to share. Okay, and then. If you want to create that mindset, then you take him as advice. Look for the good and praise it. When good is, when good is explored, it multiplies. When good is looked for and blessed, it multiplies. So that's, that's why we, that's why Emma says it. And if you want to create a heavenly mindset, look for your good and praise it. And praise it. Count your blessings. So, all right. Um, the rest of it, I, I meant the social media part. So, uh, we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Um, I commend them to you. Uh, we try and put up light, enlightening, bright, funny, uh, stuff that will, you know, just bring a smile to your face and give you a good thought. So, uh, and there are hours of content on both of the YouTube. So, I commend them to you. You want to know what's going on with the center? Please email info at creativelife.org. That will get you on the constant contact. Uh, the hot links are hot. They will either, if it says click here now, it'll either take you right to the information you want or to the person that can help you get the information. So, all right. Yep. Nope. Moving forward. Ah! Where I'm going to uh, encourage you, remind you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an amazing day, an awesome day. A go to God first day, a move your proportions up day, a know that it is all good day, a conscious day, a kind day, a compassionate day, a loving day, a get stuff done day, a celebrate your blessings day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You're a beloved child of God. You are a brilliant light. You are a divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action, or as Reverend Jesse likes to call it, you're a godling. Explore the truth of your being. Know the truth of your being. Peel back the layers of who you have been told you are and get to know who God knows you to be. I promise you that you is really cool. All right, beloveds. Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you around 9 a.m. Take care of yourself and I will see you next time.